with wine is a surefire way to impress your guests this holiday season because there's just something so culinarily legitimate about cooking with wine. So today we are braising, which is the perfect way to cook with wine. We're making braised chicken thighs with fall fruits and Sauvignon Blanc. Doesn't it just sound so elegant and fancy? It's actually really easy. So this just starts with a hot pan and then a couple teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then we are using chicken thighs. These are bone in, but I took the skin off. So anytime I'm braising, I like to take the skin off because it won't get crispy anyways. And then that way we won't have a meal that's extra greasy. That just helps reduce the fat, but we still have tons of flavor because these are bone in. So we're using white wine today, but the flavor and the texture of this dark meat chicken is really robust enough that it could stand up to red wine if you wanted to experiment with a chicken thigh dish and braising with any red wine. So these go down in there to develop a nice brown crust. You just wanna let them hang out for about three to four minutes. And then we've just got some really basic flavoring ingredients. So a couple ribs of celery and then an onion. With the celery, one of my little tricks is to save some of the leaves for garnish. Then I like to slice this thinly on the bias. So thinly sliced celery and then this onion, super simple. Just slice this up thinly as well. Okay, we've got some serious sizzling going on, about four minutes undisturbed to get nice brown crust on that first side of those chicken thighs. So I'll just season the other side, the underbelly, and then we'll give them a flip. So this one, this one's my golden child right here, nice and golden brown, really crusty. You wanna take your time to get that browning in this first step because once any liquid and moisture goes in, we won't have that luxury. So go ahead and sprinkle in, and then let it sit undisturbed for a couple minutes, then give it a stir around until the vegetables are nice and soft. Our vegetables have softened, and it's time for our wine. So we have a beautiful bottle of Sauvignon Blanc, and we're just going to go ahead and get about a cup and a half into our pan. So this gets a little bit of a head start, so just give it a couple rounds. So this just kind of hangs out. I like to give the wine a head start because it kind of takes the harsh edges off the wine, and then we want to reduce it a little bit. So while that goes, I'm going to get our dried fruit ready. Something feels so harvesty about cooking with dried fruit. So during the summertime, I cook with fresh fruit, and then when it's the holidays, I love dried fruit. So I've just got some apricots here, and then also golden raisins and cranberries, about a third cup of each. So now that this is reduced a little bit, and you can see it's thickened up, it's smelling really good. As soon as that wine hits the heat, you'll be able to smell it. We're going to go ahead and get some chicken broth in there. And I love these boxes that are resealable because we're just going to use about a cup and a half. So the same as the amount of wine, you just want to barely come up the sides of those chicken thighs. And then in goes all of my dried fruit. So it's nice and rustic. We're gonna keep the cranberries whole. The raisins will plump up as they cook. So we just wanna simmer this and then the sauce will reduce and thicken slightly and we're just cooking this until the chicken thighs are cooked through and tender, which only takes about 30 minutes. Okay, so in 30 minutes, this goes from a pot of a bunch of different ingredients to one cohesive dish. It just all melts together and it tastes amazing. I just love how the acidity of the wine really offsets the richness of this dish. So I like to serve something hearty and rustic in a bowl. And I've got some sweet mashed potatoes over here. So mashed sweet potatoes, really. Just a couple sweet potatoes mashed with butter and milk. And because sweet potatoes have so much flavor and are so sweet on their own, you can use less butter and salt and cream than you would with a traditional baking potato, which is really nice. Plus, I just think the sweetness plays off of this recipe so well. So I'm just going to nestle one of our chicken thighs right on top that bed of sweet potatoes. And then you can see that the sauce we've formed has really thickened up beautifully. So a little ladle of that sauce, and then plenty of this dried fruit, the onions, the celery. And then just to finish this off, to make it extra special, a little extra rich, is a couple coins of goat cheese. This is honey goat cheese, and I just think this makes it extra special. You can put a couple slices on top, and what I like to do is get a bite that has everything in it. Those celery leaves we saved, I like to use these just to garnish on top. So we've also solved the dilemma of what wine to serve with dinner. Why not serve the exact same wine we cooked with? That's what I love to do is cook and entertain with the same wine and this solves that problem right there. So for more holiday recipes like this one, head over to aldi.us or like Aldi on Facebook.